Are we done yet? So I'm leaving. Bye bye. Thank God. You see. Oh no, he's back. Hello lovely people, my name is Emma, welcome back to my channel, welcome if you are new. Today we're going to take a look at a video that was recommended to me, titled If Atheists Were Actually Honest. Now, this is by a channel called Christ Righteous, and I was a little bit concerned at first because it is a much smaller channel than mine, and I like to be careful, I prefer to kind of punch up in terms of numbers, I don't want to inadvertently send anybody some hate, but it seems like they're kind of prepared for backlash, or maybe it's just a way they're dealing with it, I guess I shouldn't make assumptions, but likes and dislikes, comments, even number of subscribers, it's all hidden across the board on this channel. So please don't seek out a way to hate on this person, but also you can't really, so I think we're gonna be okay to cover this. I thought this was kind of an interesting concept because I think honesty is pretty important, I try to be a pretty honest person, I mean I'm prone to the same little white lie as everybody else, if I don't want to go to a party, I might say that I'm busy. But in terms of atheism and just generally the search for truth and spirituality, I think honesty is pretty important. The kind of people I talk about, the kind of extreme religious people I talk about are the ones that are most often dishonest because I think that those are the most dangerous kinds. So I'm interested to see what it is specifically about atheists this person thinks is dishonest. My guess, I haven't seen any of this video yet, my guess is going to be that it's the kind of Kent Hovind style thing where everybody believes in God, really. It's it's written on our hearts and uh, to, to not believe in, to pretend not to believe in him is to reject him. I think you want to be careful casting aspersions on any entire group of people. There's obviously going to be dishonest atheists, but are people dishonest due to their atheism? I don't know, I just have a lot of questions, I'm interested to see where this is going to go. Hey lovely people, before we dive into the stress of today's video, I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about a little bit of mindfulness thanks to today's sponsor. I am genuinely very pleased to tell you that I have partnered with Yours, which is a mindfulness app, which let's be honest, we could all use right now. What I super love about Yours is that it's so feature rich, it's basically got everything that I used to have to have five or six different apps for. It's got sleep sounds, it's got meditation, it's got yoga, it's got relaxing music, breathing exercises. I was so pleased to find the beginners section of the yoga and body stuff because I'm inflexible and I haven't done yoga for like two years. The sleep section is so nice if you're into ASMR or meditation, there's stories, some of them are like kid friendly, there's psychology advice, just everything you need in one place and is cheaper than other wellness apps. There are even LGBTQ plus themes, we love that, there's stuff for pregnant people. Not only that, but if you go to yoursapp.com slash Emma, or use the discount code Emma, if you can remember that, you can get 60% off your yearly plan. Check out the link down below, or just go to the website and use my discount code. Thank you so much to yours for A, working with me, and B, keeping me zen during these trying times. Back to the video. This came out in December, by the way. There's a lot of Christmas decorations in the background. Let's see what our dude has to say about atheists being honest. A warm welcome to the writer of God is not real even though he exists, atheistic me, myself, and I. It wouldn't have taken much effort to remove the white background from this book graphic that he's using. It's fine. Okay, so after going through what has been presented to me, all the evidence and arguments for God's existence and the reliability of the New Testament, and all of the arguments for the historicity of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, I have came to a conclusion today. My arguments against these arguments is that I don't like it. I just simply don't like it. I can't really think on how to properly refute these arguments, but what I can say is that I do not like it, to be honest. So he's doing a bit here where he's being an atheist and he's saying, okay, I've been presented with historical evidence for Jesus and arguments for, you know, the existence of God, and I don't like it. I don't know a single atheist that has gone, okay, I hear you. But I don't like it, so I'm not going to believe in it. It's kind of a ridiculous straw man that you get on a lot of Christian channels. 
like there's there's levels of how much people might be convinced by certain evidence for different things that happen biblically and the idea that there's a dichotomy that's either you ignore it and say i don't like it and therefore i don't believe it which is nobody or you become a hardcore christian believer that that's not those two it's not just those two things honest the arguments seem pretty aligned with reality and that kind of scares me because definitely never heard an atheist say that i don't want moral accountability i don't want a higher it's like it's the classic straw man i wonder if he's gonna do this character for the entire thing or if he's gonna actually come out of character and explain this to us because this is 11 minutes long and if he's just doing an impression of a straw man for this whole thing i might have to leave because <laughs> we can't do that for the whole thing it's li like imagine if i did a video and i was like if christians were actually honest I know the Bible doesn't seem very real, but I don't like it. Science is scary and therefore I reject it. That would be a cruel misrepresentation of an entire group of people that is exactly what Christ Righteous is doing here. A being than myself, in fact, I would much rather be a- Morality is secular, by the way. God of my own life. So no- Ah, there's another classic. Oh, we should have done this as bingo. We should have made a bingo board for this. We've got, don't like it because of moral accountability. And now we've got, want to be the god of my own life. Being the ruler of your own life and uh, responsible for your own destiny, I think is very different from considering yourself a god. <laughs> Knowing that there is a god being, a creator and sustainer of all creation above humanity, it kind of scares me. So why? If the Bible turned out to be literally accurate, I would be scared. That's probably the only accurate thing about this. I would be absolutely terrified because the God in that book is not cool. He does a lot of horrible things. What I have to say, my arguments against it is that I don't like it. I am not convinced. And I'm not convinced because the evidence is not convincing enough, in fact. I'm not convinced because I don't want to be convinced. I know I act. I know that we say this all the time and it's such a like old hat thing that we all know. Any other person of a different faith could say the exact same thing to this guy. Freaking a Hindu could come and do the same thing. It's just silliness. It doesn't mean anything. He's just, he's just creating a caricature of an atheist and pretending that the evidence for Christianity and whatever specific branch of Christianity this person believes in, that that is infallible and obvious. Well, I think this person needs to maybe re-examine where their faith is coming from and do some outside reading. I act like I'm very interested in these arguments and I act as if I'm actually trying to do my true research and dig deep to see if- Most, okay, so most atheists I know that are really interested in digging deep started as complete true believers and then did the thorough research and ended up being an atheist. There are some people like me who never had that solid foundation of belief. There's a little bit of religious education in my childhood, but nothing massive. And I tried wholeheartedly to read the Bible with my heart open to the Holy Spirit, waiting for that moment that it's supposed to hit you that this is true and be overwhelmed by that emotion. And it never happened. I know that he could just say that I'm lying and so are the other atheists and you know the, his whole point obviously is that we're not being honest so I guess there's no real way to there's no real way to convince him of my side of the story so to speak but stating the obvious this is a very disingenuous way to uh, talk about atheism as if we're all just lying there's no evidence all the evidence if, if it was so obvious if all the evidence really did point to the christian god being absolutely real and the bible being accurate and jesus christ being our savior we would all be fucking christians the whole if it was that clear the whole world would be christian it's not like freaking dragon quest where you go to the temple and pray to the goddess and then your party member gets resurrected and so everyone just believes it's, n it's not like that Frickin' nerd alert. Jeez. I did hear myself just then, and I'm... I know what I sound like. These arguments are actually aligned with reality, and... To be honest, it seems extremely accurate to reality. These arguments? What arguments? If they're so accurate, state them. Give them to me. 
I have no real proper arguments against the evidence that has been shown to me. I have no real- Is he just gonna say the same three things over and over again for 11 minutes? Because I can't deal with that. Arguments against the reliability of God's existence or the historicity of Jesus Christ and his resurrection or the reliability of the New Testament. In fact, I gotta think very hard to try to come up with some foolish argument that makes no sense, but may sound very smart. Like what? What are these examples of fantastic evidence that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the New Testament is accurate? What are the arguments that the atheists are coming up with against it that are so poor? ...doesn't align with reality. I almost have to steal from God in order to argue against him. Explain that one to me. Please. I have to steal from God to argue against him? That's like, I, I'm pretty sure it was Matt Powell who said that people are using God's creation against him. And you do not want to be compared to Matt Powell. And it fails every single time. In fact, I don't even know why I'm up here if God doesn't exist. If God doesn't exist, why do I worry so much about the belief in God? Well, first of all, not every atheist worries about the belief in God. I don't worry about belief in God in terms of a personal aspect. Okay, so here we go. If you do have those personal fears as an atheist, it's probably because you were indoctrinated to believe that if you strayed from the path, you will burn in hell forever. Even once you come out the other side and don't believe in hell in that way, even if you're, even if you're say, still a Christian and you don't believe in that kind of violent punishment from God, or you're an atheist and you don't believe in God at all, that sticks with you. If you are raised to believe that as a child, it's like uh, when we looked at the Girl Defined book over on Savvy's channel and they said, the, the and this is what they were taught from when they were little kids, the moment you question the Bible, it's over. It's over for you. Your soul is doomed. You're going to burn in hell forever. So are your loved ones who don't believe. If you've been brought up believing that and you're challenging that belief, of course that's scary. Of course it is. The other fear aspect of it, and the main reason I think what he's getting at here is why do we talk about it all the time? And I get this in comments from time to time. If you don't care about God, why are you talking about God? I mean, just... The thing is, I'm not talking about God all the time. What my fear is and what I'm afraid of is not some personal hell or something that I don't believe in. It's the fact that people who believe dangerous things and who approach things like the Bible literally are indoctrinating children promoting a dangerous agenda. We look at people like Matt Powell who are arguing for systemic genocide of certain groups based on his religious beliefs. That is frightening. I'm not afraid of God. I'm afraid of human beings using God as an excuse to do atrocious things. And I think that's a very justifiable fear as well. Why am I convicted so much about moral accountability the history of Jesus Christ and his resurrection and everything he taught. A lot of the time, the reason people are interested in uh, the history of Christ is to disprove certain things. A lot of biblical scholars are in it to prove that we don't need to stand by the morals of thousands of years ago that are extremely outdated in our current society. The descriptions within the New Testament and all the details thereof why am I so con- All the contradictory details, say, in the Gospels. Convicted by this information. Why am I so convicted by the documents? What does he mean? I don't think- I don't think convicted is the word he wants here, but I'm not entirely sure what he's trying to say. Does he mean, like, preoccupied by it, maybe? I get the impression that might be what he's going for. Why am I so preoccupied by what the New Testament says? If God doesn't exist, and nothing really matters, why am I- Ah, see, that's a that's a fundamental mistake right there. He's equating God not existing with nothing really matters. And I fundamentally disagree, and that is something that is completely subjective. What he's doing is he's saying atheists and nihilists are the same thing. They're not mutually exclusive. You can be an atheistic nihilist. You could probably be a religious nihilist. But saying that all atheists are nihilists 
because if God doesn't exist, what does anything matter? Well, you would only have that perspective if you were religious and you think that everything does revolve around the worship of God. I can understand why you'd look at people who don't have that worship of God and be like, well, what is there? Because my whole life is supposed to revolve around worshipping this deity, so they clearly have nothing and what's the point? This is going to be different for every single atheist, but... Since I'm here, the point of doing things and continuing to exist is for the love of it. To help your fellow man, to try and look after the planet as much as we are horribly failing at that. To learn more about the universe, the incredible universe that we live in. The only thing we know for sure is that we have this one beautiful short life, so we should fill it with as many wonderful moments as possible and spend our time trying to make it wonderful for as many people as we can, and to stop harm where we see it, and to try and help others, and to have a nice time, and look at frogs. I'm wasting my time up here at this very moment. If God doesn't exist- Why am I wasting my time up here in the living room of my parents' house in front of these very child-friendly Christmas decorations? I have no idea. This, none of this even matters. It doesn't matter if you believe in God, it doesn't matter if you believe in Santa Claus, it doesn't matter if you believe in Bigfoot, because all of these beliefs are just figments of our imagination. Yes, but it does matter. It matters whether you believe that because A, if you believe one irrational thing, like Bigfoot or Santa Claus, you become predisposed to believe more irrational things, which is why there is such a crossover between, between, say, biblical literalism and really fundamentalist religion and conspiracy theories. And that is a dangerous path that people should be concerned about. People like me are concerned about. Some of us have seen it firsthand. Some of us have seen it in reverse, where people have gone from conspiracy theories to God, but the point still stands. I am not bothered when people believe in Santa Claus. I'm not bothered when they believe in... I would be bothered if, I think if adult people believed in Santa Claus, I would be bothered. <laughs> because it's a fundamentally untrue thing that is immediately disprovable when you start to lean into one very implausible belief, you can be easily led into others. Look at the Flat Earth community and how much of that intersects with other conspiracy theories. Aliens are not bothered when they believe in elves and mermaids and tooth fairies and Bigfoot, even though there's no evidence. I am bothered when people believe in those things. Is he saying this because it's mostly children that believe in those things? You know they grow up and stop believing in things like that, right? Except for the very small group of people on TikTok that think mermaids are real. But I'm not convinced that they're not just all in it for a laugh, to be honest. It's absolutely none across the board. But when it comes to God, I'm truly convicted. Because there is evidence for God's existence. Where? Christ Righteous has just blown me out of the water. He's got evidence for God's existence. Show it to me, dude. Don't hold back. I'm sat here like a lemon laughing at your impression of an atheist doing bad stand-up in your mum's living room. This whole time he's had evidence for God's existence. No wonder he thinks atheists are so silly. Share it with me, man. But I just simply deny it. I deny it. It's not that the evidence are not good enough, it's just I simply deny it. What is the evidence? I don't want it to be good enough. It's not that it's not objectively good enough, I just simply don't. What is this objectively good evidence? If it's so objectively good, why wouldn't he say it? He could be impressing us so much. Sounds like he's just talking bullshit. Accept it. I don't accept the existence of God. So I waste my time making channels on YouTube and social media and coming to these live debates to argue for no reason because at the end of the day I've already explained the reasons. I've explained some of the reasons. There are tons more. He's got almost a bit of a persecution complex and he's kind of projecting that outwards. Like he feels like maybe persecuted as a Christian because because people are trying to confirm whether or not parts of the Bible are valid. He feels attacked by atheists and so he's saying like all as like retribution he's saying all atheists are stupid and they're missing the obvious. I don't know. It's weird. Hey, as an atheist, I'm wrong, <laughs> and I lose the argument. Regardless, I'm technically arguing against a non-existent being. No, you're arg. If you're in a, if is he still talking about debates? If he's still talking about debates, then you're arguing against 
against another human being who's saying that God exists. You're not arguing with God. That would be an amazing debate. That's the only time I think I would engage in this kind of debate is if I got to directly debate God. A being that does not exist. We are wasting our time giving attention to something that doesn't exist. Even if that was the reason, if atheists took part in debates and wrote books and things because it was a waste of time, that would be accurate if you felt that way, you would be upset that there are so many millions of religious people wasting time, and that would be reasonable. Like, I think even this sort of facetious pretend argument he's doing sounds fairly reasonable to me. Am I just biased at this point? <laughs> if I'm correct... <laughs> I'm sorry. That was an amazing noise. <laughs> then God absolutely does not exist. I might as well walk off stage. I might as well not waste my time. I might as well just... So he is being like a... He's being like a stand-up com comedian atheist? Maybe he's watched like a stand-up show by an atheist and he's been really offended by it and so he's taken the piss? But like, the reason that people do that is for comedy. Th you might as well ask why anybody does stand-up of any kind, why any person does stand-up. Just sleep with how many people I want, do it. That came out of left field. That would be another one for the bingo, though. Atheists just want to sleep with people. I don't want God to dictate who I can sleep with. I want to be sleeping with loads of people. Whatever I want. Drink and smoke whatever I want. Be they drank all the time in the Bible. You could definitely be Christian and an alcoholic, is what I'm saying. So I don't know what, like... And if, if this, like satirical impression of an atheist was accurate. We'd all be drinking and smoking and having sex all the time, and probably we wouldn't be doing <laughs> YouTube channels. So we'd be so busy smoking. <gasps> I have been asked on YouTube if I smoke before. I think sometimes my voice is just a bit croaky. I don't smoke. Because God doesn't exist, and I don't care if you believe, you believe, you believe, you believe, you can believe in whatever you want. God doesn't exist, that's the truth, that's the fact, there is no evidence. So I can just live my life and not have to worry about what other people believe. Because it doesn't necessarily affect me if you believe in God. So I should... He, he just, like, proved my own point. It doesn't necessarily affect me. It does affect me if you're trying to put your religious beliefs into government. Or into education. If you're trying to impart your religious beliefs onto some aspect of society that affects me, then it does affect me. Good job, you almost got it. You don't have to worry if you want to try to prove an unexistent being. Do whatever you please. God doesn't exist, so I don't have to worry about it. So Again, oh, if you want to try and prove God exists, then who cares? Well, I care because you're convincing other people. You're convincing people who are vulnerable to those beliefs. And most of the time, the kind of people that are doing that convincing happen to run ministries that get money from those people, say. We don't care about the people who are just living their lives believing what they want to believe. Genuinely, I don't care. If you're happy, you're living a good life and you're not hurting other people, I could not care less what you do, what you believe. You can believe in fairies at the end of the garden for all I care. But the second you're doing anything that starts to spread that to other people, especially if you're doing it to a big audience, especially if you're doing it for financial gain, then yes, I care. And it becomes important to me. Are we done yet? We're only halfway through. So I'm leaving, bye-bye. Thank God. You see... Oh no, he's back. Being an atheist simply means the disbelief or lack of belief in God or higher being. So honestly, it's actually a personal choice. It's not that there is no evidence for God's existence. It's just a personal choice that anyone can absolutely make. And I've made my choice. I chose to be an atheist. I choose not because there's a lack of evidence, but because I just don't believe. I choose not to believe. It's kind of... This is like when people say, like, I don't believe in gay marriage. And you're just kind of there like, but you don't agree with it, but you believe in it because it's a real tangible thing and you can see it happening in front of your eyes with your senses. He's kind of equating, again, rejecting God with not believing in God. If there was sufficient evidence that did prove God, I would believe. I would have no choice but to believe. Whether or not I followed would be a choice. Just like I believe in 
ty- human tyrants of government. Like, I believe in them, I reject them, but I believe that they exist because I know they do. There's overwhelming evidence for the fact that they exist. Like, if I was about to walk across a field and somebody stopped me in my tracks and said, hey, don't walk any further because there's hidden mines in that field. I absolutely choose to say, I don't believe you. And I decide to go walk on the field and then BOOM! I explode into many pieces at the end. I don't understand this analogy. Like, I don't... I don't get what he's trying to say. Is the field of mines like hell? And we're like being ignorant by saying I don't believe you? I guess if there was a minefield there would be like fences and signs. It would be very reasonable to be like, I don't believe you if some crazy person leaps out of the bushes and is like, that's a minefield! End of the day. I'm simply making the choice to not believe. Even if they point out evidence that there is indeed mines in the field, like in- If somebody pointed out this evidence, this irrefutable evidence for God, I would believe. I would be forced to believe. I'm gonna start skimming through because he's just saying the same things over and over again and they're not real. And they're really rude. Even though intuitively I know God exists. I no, I don't. Intuitively I do not know that God exists. I don't know anything intuitively. I know things that are demonstrable, that we have evidence for, that I can detect with my senses. None of those things are, are God. I know God exists. I know that there is a moral standard because it's written in my heart. Why are so- Ah, uh, the old the moral standard and knowledge of God is written on my heart. It's bullshit, because if it was true, everyone would be a Christian. Again, people of different faith will be utterly convinced, just the same as this guy, that knowledge of their God is written on their hearts. One of you has to be wrong. Something's objectively wrong. Where do we get- Some things are objectively wrong. Like murder, for example, which God commanded people to do. Like genocide, for example, which God commanded people to do and committed. Like sexual assault, for example, which God commanded. Pretty much all of the things that Christianity says are objectively wrong and this is where we all get our morals from, God is guilty of doing. So what does that say about that morality? These objective standards from. I myself can answer it. In fact, I use evolution. No, people can answer it. Because people study sociology and social history of humanity. Have you noticed that our morals have changed and evolved over time? If morality was objective, came from God, and was written on all our hearts, it wouldn't change over time. Human sacrifice used to be acceptable. Is that part of our objective morality? Were those people's hearts wrong? Did God change along the way what he's writing on our hearts? No, morality is secular. I'm having another sweet. ...to try to defend it. But that's just the most foolish argument I can perhaps use for this argument against morality. So I'm kind of just left with nothing. But I've... I'm just left with... Oh, okay. ignore everything I've said through this whole video, guys. It turns out I'm left with nothing. I've got no arguments against the Christian God. It's 100% true. Morality comes from him. Everybody of every other faith and every atheist is just wrong and dishonest, and that's the end. Thanks, dude. Well, my answer is that no matter what evidence is presented to me, I'm going to reject it and- That sounds like fundamentalist religion. That sounds like biblical literalism. Whatever evidence is presented to me, I am going to reject it. You're not describing atheism. Anyways, this was my argument. Um. I hope you guys enjoyed my arguments against God and his existence. Um, but I'm still an atheist and I still don't believe in the existence of God because I don't want to believe. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was one of the worst things I've ever seen. <laughs> don't go spreading hate about this guy. It's clearly a young dude. I hate to make assumptions, but it seems like he's probably been pretty heavily indoctrinated. That doesn't excuse him doing this terrible straw man, just making up what all atheists believe, the fact that we all do believe in God and just reject out of fear, the fact that morality is obviously from God, the fact that he claims that there's so much evidence for the existence of God that is irrefutable, 
but can't produce any or talk about it. Wow, that was a that was a roll that was a roller coaster. Ooh. So leave your thoughts down below <laughs> if you're an atheist. Let me know if you are dishonest, if you just disbelieve out of fear. Genuinely though, let me know what your reasons are for your atheism if you are an atheist down below. Honestly, I think this dude is doing Christianity a really poor service. He is not representing the best of them. Well, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, leave your thoughts down below. I would love to read them. Do consider giving this video a like, maybe sharing it if you enjoyed. Check out some of my other stuff. It all really, really helps. Before we go, I would like to give a huge thank you and a big shout out to my giant chickens over on Patreon. Aaron Spear, Amalgam of Neuroses, Amber, Burt Whitehead, Chantale, Chris Simpson, Connie Wright, Conla, Chicken Maximus Lions, God damn it, Conla, <gasps> Corey Garner, Curious Capybara, Danny, Denny5252, Dr. Mint, L, Faye Gregory, Fulcrum, Gaming Ridge, Gay of Reckoning, George Bush, Henry Curtis, Izzy, Jason Metcalf, Joe Rowe, John Fry, John Smith, Kent Woodward, Chris Convaga, Lizzie Gale, Lynn Dobbs, Mattis McChicken Nuggetus, Miles Tegg, Mogaringa, Mr. Creosote, Nerd Fiction, Ninja Red, Peter Kirok, Psyched Dude, Kike, Rosina Keller, Sarah Shavi, Simping on Emma Thorne, Seriously, Tank Low, The Enchanter formerly known as Tim, The Myth Vision Podcast, Tracy O'Raw, and Wasatch Witch. Thank you so much, you guys are amazing. <laughs> Have a very lovely week, and I will see you really soon. <laughs> <laughs>